So, uh, my name is Eric Dunn. I'm the Digital Health Manager of the Sydney North Health Network, PHNs. Uh, we, we run one of the PHNs uh, across Australia. Uh, there's 31 uh, primary health networks uh, across Australia, um, and this is pretty much what we do. Um, in a nutshell, basically we do um, uh, these assessments across the community. So for us, it's the Sydney North community, which is about a million people. Um, and then we commission health services to fill the gaps. So where we find that there are gaps in the health service, then we can commission services to, um, to fill those gaps. And I typically work in the uh, digital realm. Um, but I'm going to start by talking about my father. Um, so my father was born in 1929, um, and as a child he went to school in a horse and cart. Um, and that's not a picture of him. Um, I, I wish I had a picture of him when he was a kid, um, but unfortunately he was orphaned at age 10, and um, and then the whole he was um, what was it? One of the, he was the second youngest of six and uh, they were split up amongst families all across Australia um, after the parents died. But he, um, he uh, went to school in a horse and cart and then uh, when he was able to he joined the Navy and went into electronics and um, had a career in electronics and eventually became a TV technician. Um, although he was advised by TAFE when he went to, to learn about um, black and white television that this was only a passing fad <laughs> and it wasn't going to last so he was a fool for doing that but he had a career in that but he um, he had he died in 2004 and when he died for the last 10 years nearly he had been using the computer he was on an inter on the internet he'd been um, working with his genealogy so he'd been tracing his family down um, and I think that going from going to school in a horse and cart and seeing all of those changes, that's a massive change in one lifetime. And the computer that he was using, which I usually had to fix um, were, uh, before he died, was not much different, I think, to the computers that we use today. It had a CPU and a hard drive and it was connected to the internet. And sure, there's a lot more computing power now, but what I think is happening around digital is that things are becoming more refined and they're moving away from, um, you know, being a... So I was going to talk about the, um, the digital health landscape. So um, a lot of industry has changed a lot um, over that period of time. And when you look at the computer industry, it's, it, it has gone, you know, smaller and smaller and faster and faster um, and other industries like the transport industry has changed a lot uh, it's really embraced technology I mean you look at what cars are today cars are all about technology but the health industry hasn't really changed that much while um, a lot of health providers are embracing technology there isn't a, an overall technology change uh, that's happening there so Let's have a look at who are the players in the technology industry, uh, sorry, in the health industry at the moment. So we've got uh, hospitals, public hospitals, we've got um, private hospitals, uh, we've got GPs, um, specialists. Um, don't ask me why I chose male for GPs and female for specialists. Um, it doesn't mean a thing. Um, pharmacies. We've got um, allied health, like uh, physiotherapists and podiatrists and um, what are they called? Psychologists. <laughs> yeah, that's one that floats to the top. Um, then, of course, there's uh, pathology. Um, we've got digital imaging, which is not just x-rays now. There's MRIs and all sorts of other um, three-letter acronyms. Um, and we've got aged care facilities. Um, ambulance, um, then we've got rapid response teams and after hours services, um, and it's getting quite crowded up there, right? Um, but there's somebody missing, something missing, what's missing? Okay. Uh, patient. Patient. Yes, patient. Patient is missing. <laughs> 
So um, when you look at these digital health landscape, there's um, all of these players that are there, and they all have um, different ways of dealing with electronic medical records. So um, if I can just talk about um, public hospitals for a minute. So um, I know more about New South Wales than, than any of the other states, um, but um, the, the medical records um, in all of the hospitals across New South Wales are held in electronic medical record um, software. Um, and every hospital has a different version. It's made mainly by a crowd called Cerner, um, and every one of them is slightly different. So, and they don't talk to each other. And they don't talk to anything, actually, very much at all. So what the eHealth New South Wales have done to fix this problem is they've come in and they've created a thing called HealthyNet, uh, which has been around for a number of years and through various uh, iterations. But it basically layers over the top of all of the EMR systems in all of the hospitals, public hospitals in New South Wales, and allows those hospitals to talk to each other as well as to talk to um, other systems like um, secure messaging in my health record, which I'm going to get to in a minute. But all of these other ones, general practice, specialists, pharmacy, allied health, pathology, and so on and so on, all have electronic medical record systems that are siloed. So they all sit with the specialist, with the GP, and they don't necessarily talk to anything else. So we've got this system. And we've also got um, all of the systems across Australia and none of them talk to each other. So, oh sorry, I just put Tasmania where it belongs. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go back to this fellow for a minute. One thing that all of the medical professionals agree on is that medical records should follow the patient. It shouldn't be siloed in a hospital, it shouldn't sit with the GP, it shouldn't necessarily sit with um, the specialist or whatever, it should follow the patient. And I imagine that this poor fellow here doesn't necessarily want to have, oh, well, I should ask you, how many times should you repeat your medical history when you go and see a GP <laughs> or a specialist? or go to hospital, or go to emergency. How many times? Once, maybe? A thousand? I don't know. So if the medical record was to follow the patient, we need a system that runs across Australia that will allow this data to follow the patients. So the, um, the Australian government, the Australian federal government, looked at the, the, the landscape and said, OK, what can we do? Uh, should we force all of these medical professionals to talk to each other? Um, they all have their own businesses, so that could be a bit difficult. Um, so what are we going to do? All right, let's create, we've got a system here that works. So it's called the Personally Controlled Electronic Medical Record, PCEHR. I get mixed up with that one. Um, so that it's been running for six years, it works really well. We've got around about 10% of Australia using it. So why don't we change the name of it and get it working? So they did that, they created an agency to look after it, and eventually it became this, My Health Record. And My Health Record uh, was uh, went to opt out um, in February this year, um, and by the end of the opt out period, and all the consolidation, etc. It ended up with 90% of Australians now have my health record. Before the opt-out period finished, 23% of Australia opted in. So nearly a quarter of Australia said, "Yes, I'm so bad. Want this so badly? I'm just going to go and get it." But there's some common misconceptions around my health record. So, for instance, um, it's empty until it's activated. Sorry, that's not a misconception. People think, the misconception is that people think that their records are all in there. It's not, there's nothing in there. It's not, there's nothing in there until it's activated. Um, and the way it's activated is that you go and you look at it, or a health professional goes and looks at it. 
only health professionals can access it. It can't be accessed by anybody else. The, in fact, it's so difficult to even get medical professionals to access it. They've got to be authenticated by three different agencies before they can even have access to it. And then they've got to have performance software that works with it for them to be able to access it. So only health professionals can access it. It's secure. In fact, it's so divorced from the internet that it's, uh, it's as divorced from the internet as it possibly can be and still be functional. So it's not like the Singapore system where it's just you go to a web page and there's a username and password to log in. You have to go through, you guys have to go through MyGov to be able to access it, and that's a double opt in um, security. And then health professionals also have to have. Um, multiple um, uh, security systems to, to get through to be able to access it. And it's controlled by you. This is the most important thing. In the UK, they didn't have it controlled by the, um, by the patient. It was just foisted upon everyone. But over here, we've said, okay, if you want it, you've got it. If you don't want it, you don't have to have it. So these are some of the controls in my health record. So you can choose to restrict access to specific documents. You can restrict access to your whole my health record with a PIN number. So if somebody wants to access it, they've got to, you've got to give them that PIN number. In an emergency, there is a break glass facility. So if you can't speak, then they have to look at it. But that break glass facility is audited. Um, you can receive an SMS email. I'm running out of time, but it's, I, I, um, I have an eight-year-old daughter, and we went to see the GP um, uh, earlier this week. And um, it was a GP we hadn't seen before. And I said, well, can you please upload a, an event summary to my daughter's my health record? And um, he's typing away on his computer. And then my phone rang with a text message. And I went, oh, sorry, I'll pull it out and go to turn it off. And go, oh, it's you. And he said, what do you mean? He says, oh, that's you accessing my daughter's my health record. I've just been told that you, you're accessing it. So it was instant. So all aspects on our, or should I say, all instances of access to my health record are monitored and logged. And they have algorithms that look for stuff like multiple accesses in a short period of time. Um, accesses in different states at the same time, all of this sort of thing, and so, and, and they follow up on them all. Um, I was going to talk a bit about security, um, and one of the reasons I wanted to talk about that quickly was because um, the security on the My Health Record system is so good that, um, and, and it's got so much scrutiny. Um, that I really can't see a problem with that, but I was more, um, I wanted to just quickly say, the two things that I find uh, working in digital um, that stand out are about identity theft. And I'm sure other people are gonna talk about this a lot, but the two things that I think are absolutely necessary in this day and age are to have a password manager, so that you can put a different password on every um, system that you're involved with. So where you're talking about Netflix, or you're talking about LinkedIn, or Facebook, or all of these ones. Like LinkedIn was hacked um, a while ago, and 160,000 um, username and passwords were stolen, and um, then they were sold on the dark web. And those, what they, they don't try and hack your LinkedIn account. They go, well, you probably use the same username and password on all of your other systems. So that's what they do, they go after the other systems. And what they're looking for is your identity. And your identity is where they, is where they can make money. Um, and one of the things, so you need to protect your identity. And one of the things that in Australia I think is very important to protect is your uh, driver's license. So you might not know that you cannot change your driver's license number in Australia. So. Um, I'm digressing a little bit, but all you need to take out a loan is a driver's license. You've got your name.
name, address, and driver's license number, you can take that alone. And if somebody takes that alone in your name, you're liable for it. So protect your driver's license. The other part, just quickly, is secure messaging. So while we've got My Health Record, um, that, al that allows uh, medical records to follow a patient, we also need the professionals to talk to each other. And they need to talk to each other in a way that's secure. So a system has been invented called Secure Messaging, and that allows um, documents and information to go from the clinical software of one provider to the clinical software of another provider. It's point to point um, between health providers, and it's compatible with their clinical software. And the reason that I've particularly brought up these two is because they're part of the National Digital Health Strategy from the Australian Digital Health Agency, and this is the strategy. So it starts with the linchpin, which is My Health Record. So we have 90% of Australians now have a My Health Record. The next thing is to have health information that can be exchanged securely, and that's what we're working on at the moment, is secure messaging and getting that rolled out to all of the um, health providers. So the PHNs are very involved in that. So there's, as I said, there's 31 PHNs across Australia. So we're working with health professionals in our area, um, which is around about 5,000 GPs and 2,500 uh, specialists, as well as 2,500 uh, allied health and so on. So once we've done that, then the next part is better availability and access to prescriptions through medicine safety. Um, then we're moving on to enhanced models of care, so digitally enabled models of care that, is, that um, improve accessibility. Um, moving, then moving into a workforce that is confidently using digital health. And finally, being able to drive innovation through our digital health system so that we can end up with better outcomes for, our, for the people. So, the next thing is change. So, what if we do nothing? I would encourage you all to activate your My Health Record. Jump online, go to MyGov, get it happening. That means you'll get your two, um, you'll get two years of um, Medicare uh, history that will go in there. Um, and if you don't want it, then you have the opportunity to um, turn it off um, and all data will be removed from it or you can put your security controls on it. And that's me. Thank you very much.